session, so it's being recorded now. And guys, I was going to go through this here, 7.1. Uh, at any point in time, if you have any questions about anything in particular, or if I say something that doesn't make any sense, just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to go, you know, kind of go over it and, and, and answer anything you guys might have, okay? All right, so 7.1 is an introduction to hypothesis testing, and it says hypothesis test is a process that uses sample statistics. Uh, we're actually only going to deal with mean and proportion. We're not going to deal with we're not going to deal with variance at all, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that right there. Uh, to test a claim about the value of corresponding population parameters. So, like, here's our first example. It says a car manufacturer advertises that its new hybrid car has a mean mileage of 50 miles per gallon. Uh, to test this claim, a sample would be taken, and then using what we've learned from previous sections, we could determine if the sample mean differs enough from the advertised mean. And if it is, then we can we can conclude that the advertisement is false. So uh, the first thing we have is something called a hypothesis. And it says a statement about a population parameter is called a statistical hypothesis. And there's always going to be two types of hypothesis. The first one is called the null hypothesis. And then the second one is the complement called the alternate hypothesis. And either of those two may represent the claim. So the first part here says a null hypothesis, and the way we use to denote it, guys, is the way I pronounce that, I just call it ho, right? H, there's a little zero. I know it's a zero, not, a, not an O, but I call it ho. So it says a null hypothesis is a stati statistical hypothesis that contains a statement of equality. That means that there has to be an equal sign somewhere, okay? And it could be a less than, a greater than, or equal to, or just simply equal to. But it's got to have an equal to part of it. The null hypothesis always has the equal to part. And then the alternate hypothesis won't. Okay, and it's going to be the complement of the null. Uh, and so the alternate hypothesis will either have uh, greater than, less than, or not equal to. Okay. So again, I know it says H sub zero or H naught. I just call this and I call this one right I don't do the whole sub business it is, I think it's just easier for me okay and it says some possible hypothesis regarding claims made about the mean mu are shown below regardless of which you use you always assume that mu is equal to k and examine uh, the sampling distribution on the basis of this assumption okay so what I want to emphasize about this little first part that we have right here, y'all, is that if you look at the null hypothesis, which are these at the top, all of them have an equal to part in there, okay? And then the alternates won't, okay? So the alternate has no equal to, no equal to, and obviously not equal to, right? So... <clears throat> For these first couple of problems here, it says practice. Write the claim as a mathematical statement, and then state the null and the alternate hypothesis and identify which represents the claim. Okay, so the first part here says a water faucet manufacturer announces that the mean flow rate of a certain type of faucet is less than two and a half gallons a minute. Okay, so when I read that problem here, it's talking about the mean flow rate. So for the mean, the symbol that we use for the mean is that funny looking U, it's pronounced mu, and it says it is less than two and a half gallons per minute. So this is less than 2.5 gallons per minute. Now, this right here, y'all, this is our claim because it says that they're announcing this, right? This is the statement that they're making. Their mean is less than two and a half gallons a minute. Now, what we need to figure out is we need to figure out which is the null and which is the alternate hypothesis, okay? So the first thing I want you to notice, there is no equal to part on this part right here. There's no equal to part, so that's going to have to be my alternate hypothesis, okay? Because the alternate does not have an equal to part. Now, the way we're going to find the null hypothesis is we're going to ask ourselves, what is the opposite of saying something is less than two and a half? Well, the opposite of something being less than two and a half would be greater than or actually equal to 2.5 gallons per minute. And that is our 
null hypothesis. And notice the null always has that little equal to part in it, okay? So again, what I'm really trying to do in these problems here, because guys, chapter seven, the problems are all going to be very similar. But the the what we're doing actually in 7.1 is just trying to figure out, okay, do I know which is the null? Do I know which is the alternate? And do I know which one is the claim? The one thing that I want to emphasize before I even think about which is my null and which is my alternate, the first thing I'm doing when I'm writing down happens to be the claim, right? Because if you notice here, when we wrote this down and we said it's less than two and a half, that was the claim, right? That's what they told me in the problem. So let's take a look at number two. We're going to go about it the same way. It says a cereal company advertises that the main weight of the contents of its 20 ounce cereal boxes is actually more than 20 ounces. Okay, so one more time, we are talking about mean weight, so I'm going to use mu again, and it says it is more than 20 ounces, so this is greater than 20 ounces. This is my claim. So I haven't even thought about what is my alternate, what's my null, I'm just writing down what they're claiming, okay? Now, the first thing I want to notice here is there is no equal to in what we wrote here, so since if the equal to is not there, that's going to be our alternate. And then the null hypothesis will be the one that does have the equal to part. So what we say is, well, what's the opposite of saying something is more than 20? Well, that it would be smaller than or equal to 20. Okay. And that's really all we're doing for these problems here, one, two, three, four. That's really all it is we're trying to do. Okay. Um, let's take a look here at number three. And it says, a university publicizes that the proportion of its students that graduate in four years is 82%. Okay, so I'm not talking about mean anymore. We're talking about proportions. So remember, for proportions, uh, we use the P. And it says, it says the proportion of students who graduate in four years is 82%. So I'm going to put equals 0.82. This here happens to be our claim. Okay, so now we know what our claim is, right? We, we know the claim. So since we know the claim, and this does have an equal to part, that is our null hypothesis, because the null always has the equal to part. So then we're going to say, well, what's the alternate? Well, what's the opposite of saying something is equal to, saying that it is not equal to 82%, right? And notice, guys, how I'm writing my my um, what you call it? How I'm writing my uh, values. I'm if it's given to me as a percent, I'm writing them as a decimal. Okay. All right. So let's do the same thing for number four. It says uh, a realtor publicizes that the proportion of its homeowners who feel their house is too small for the families is more than 24 percent. Okay. So our proportion is more than. 24%, excuse me, again, this happens to be my claim uh, because it tells me right here it's more than 24%, and because there is no equal to part, this happens to be our alternate. So then the null hypothesis would say, well, what is the opposite of saying something is greater than? Well, saying something is less than or equal to, right? And finally, number five. Number five says, uh, a school publicizes that the proportion of its students who are involved in at least one extracurricular activity is 61%. Okay, so the same, the proportion is 61%. This here, again, happens to be my claim. And guys, again, just because it has that equal to part, that's gonna be my null hypothesis, that's gonna be my HO. So then we're going to find our HA by saying, well, what's the opposite of saying something is equal to? We're saying that it's not equal to, okay? So um, before I go on, let me double check in with you guys. Are we, am I doing okay so far? Is this making sense in terms of how do I identify, uh, how do I write my claim? And then how do I identify which one is the null and the alternate? If you say it's good, it doesn't make sense. What do you think? 
Thumbs up. Yes, we're good. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then let me go ahead and get to uh, the next part here, which talks a little bit about types of errors and significance. So it says regarding the which hypothesis is a claim, we're always going to uh, begin the hypothesis test by assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Uh, then we're going to take a sample, and when we perform the test, we're going to make one of two decisions. So one of the two decisions we're going to make, y'all, is we're going to say that we're either going to reject the null hypothesis or we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? Um, so it says, keep in mind, because we're only dealing with a sample, we have to accept that our decision might be incorrect. And there's two types of errors here, okay? And so the first one says a type one error occurs if the null hypothesis is rejected uh, when it's actually true. And then a type two error uh, occurs if the null hypothesis is not rejected when it actually happens to be false. Okay? So what, the easiest way to explain that is by looking at this piece right here. Okay? So it says hypothesis testing is sometimes compared to the legal system used in the United States. So under this uh, system, steps are, this, these steps are used. So number one, a carefully worded accusation is written. So they might say, the accusation might be, Omar, that's me, we're, uh, we are accusing you of robbing the bank. Okay, so I've been accused of robbing the bank right there by, by school at Pecan and Ware Road, right? They said I went in there and I took money that wasn't mine. Okay, so in the United States, guys, right? Not in every country, but in the United States, I am assumed innocent until proven guilty. And the burden of the proof lies with the prosecution. So the people who are accusing me of robbing the bank have to provide enough proof so that they can convict me. And it says, if the evidence is not strong enough, then there's no conviction. A not guilty verdict does not prove that a defendant is innocent, right? So I am assumed innocent. It doesn't mean that I am, but that's the assumption. Um, and then number three says, the evidence needs to be conclusive beyond a reasonable doubt. And the system assumes that more harm is done by convicting the innocent, a type one error, than by not convicting the guilty, which is a type two error, okay? So, <clears throat> um, so think about it this way. So here I have this little, this kind of little table, right? So suppose I am innocent, right? If I am found not guilty, then justice has been served, right? I didn't do it, and they found that I was not guilty. This is exactly what we want. Now, suppose I still didn't do it. I am innocent, but I was found guilty. This is what we call a type one error. In this particular case, not in all cases, but in this particular case, in terms of the legal system, we say this is a bigger disservice to be putting guilty people in jail, okay? Now, the other possibility is that I could have been, here we go, I could have been guilty and I was found not guilty, that would be a type two error. So even though I actually robbed the bank, the prosecution cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt that I'm the one who actually did it, so then they let me go. That's a type two error. Or if I'm actually guilty and they find me guilty, well then we would say, yes, justice has been served, right? So this is how we think about type one errors and type two errors. Like I said, in this particular case, uh, with the legal system, a type one error is is more harmful than a type two error. Okay, we don't. We definitely don't want guilty people going free, but more so, we don't want to be putting the wrong people in prison. Okay, so uh, let's think about number six here. And number six says a company specializing in a parachute assembly states that its main parachute failure rate. Uh, that's supposed to say mean. Sorry about that, guys. This right here it's supposed to say. Mean. So the mean par parachute failure rate is not more than 1%. Okay, so if it's not more than 1%, it has to be less than or equal to 0.01, right? 
this is our this is our claim okay so um, it says you're going to perform a hypothesis test to determine whether the company's claim is false identify the null and alternate hypothesis and label the claim okay so we have labeled the claim now we're going to figure out which is the null and which is the alternate because this has an equal to part this is going to be our null hypothesis right so then my alternate hypothesis is going to say that mu is greater than 0.1%. Okay. And then it says we're going to write the possible one and possible two type errors. And we're going to um, see which is more serious. Okay, so guys, I'm just going to kind of scroll right here. And so I'm looking at this part right here. Okay, that's what I'm looking at. So uh, let's see. See the best way to write this. So HO is true, HO is false. Okay. So we're going to put HO is true, and then HO is false. And let's see. Then we have reject and not reject. So reject and not reject and I'm just filling in my type 1 error my type 2 error so this here is type 1 this here is type 2 and both these here would be the correct decision okay so let's think about this for a second right a type if um, if the null hypothesis is true, right? So their claim that the, oops, sorry about that. Uh, their claim that the mean rate, the parachute failure rate is, sorry about this guys, this thing's popping up here. Um, that their parachute failure rate is less than 1%, right? Suppose that is true. And we reject uh, the null hypothesis, right? Uh, let me see. Make sure I'm writing it down right. Yes. Yes, we reject the null hypothesis. This is a type 1 error, right? So let's think about what that means. So the failure rate really is less than 1%. But we say, mm, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to accept that what they're saying is true. Right. So what does that mean? That means that we were going to go parachute, we were going to go like skydiving or something like that. And and the failure rate really is less than one percent, less than or equal to one percent. And we decide, you know what, I don't think it's safe enough. So what happens? Well, maybe we missed out on an opportunity. Right. Maybe we missed out on that. Now, let's look at a type two error. A type two error says. The null hypothesis is false. So their claim that the parachute failure rate is less than 1% is not true. That means that it's actually more than 1%, right? So could it be 1.5%? Maybe. Could it be 2%? Sure. Could it be 10%? Maybe. Could it be 80%? Who knows, right? Now, suppose that that the failure rate is actually more than 1%. And we do not reject their null hypothesis. We say, no, we believe everything you told me. I believe that you said when it's less than 1%. And then we go skydiving. And I'm gonna see who's here with us today. So today we have, we got, we got quite a few people here. So we have Erica, Jasmine, and, and Miranda, right? So we all go skydiving and myself, that's four of us. And I'm going to make this up. Suppose the uh, the uh, failure rate is 50%. Out of the four of us that go skydiving, uh, two of us may not be able to go skydiving again, right? We might be, there might be a lot of things we won't be able to do again, right? So in this particular case, the one that's more serious would be the type 2 error because the failure rate really is more than one percent and we don't reject it we believe that they're telling us the truth and we go skydiving and then you know we end up in, in bad shape okay 
So uh, let's see. So the next part says, how do we know whether or not to reject the null hypothesis? And this says, this is going to depend on whether you get an unusual sample statistic from the sampling distribution. And it says, we've seen an unusual defined with a probability that's less than 0.05. Um, and it says there's also always a possibility that we're going to reject the null hypothesis is actually true. And to decrease this probability, we can lower the level of significance. All right. So it says um, in a hypothesis test, the level of significance is your maximum allowable probability of making a type 1 error. And it's denoted, it, uh, denoted by alpha. And the probability of making a type 2 error is denoted by beta. Okay, so I'm going to walk you all through this next process here, and it says statistical tests and p-values. So it says, after stating the null and alternate hypothesis, specifying the level of significance, we're going to obtain a random sample and calculate the sample statistic using x-bar or p-hat. We're not going to be using the variance guys, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, let's see, corresponding to the parameter of the null hypothesis, um, let's see. The sample statistic is called the test statistic, and we're going to, with the, with the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, a test statistic is converted to a standardized test statistic, such as ZT. Again, we're not going to use this little funny looking X squared, or that one over there, that's variance, uh, which will be used in making the decision about the null hypothesis. Okay, so I'm trying to get to some problems so that we can kind of, you know, get some practicality here. It says if the null hypothesis is true, then a p-value or probability value of a hypothesis test is the probability of obtaining the sample statistic where the value is extreme or more extreme than the one determined from the sample data. Okay, ah, here we go. So guys, we're gonna have three types of tests. We have something called a left tail, a right tail, and a two tail test. What tells me whether or not the, tail, the uh, test is a left tail, right tail, or two tail test is the alternate hypothesis. And what I mean by the alternate hypothesis is the HA. Okay, that's what I'm going to look at. So if you notice, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so if you notice here, like in this particular problem, look at my HA. Look at the direction of that arrow. It's pointing to the left, so that's why we call it a left tail test because I'm looking for the area underneath that curve from this point from going like this, right? In this area here. So a right tail test. So again, what do I do? I look at my HA. So here's my HA. Look at the direction that this little arrow is pointing. Oh, it's pointing to the right. And it's really that easy to figure out. All I got to do is look at the little direction of inequality. And that's going to tell me if it's a right tail test. Now, if you look at this one here, something called a two-tail test, okay? So a two-tail test, okay, there we go. A two-tail test, when it's not equal to, is gonna be a two-tail test, okay? And the way I'm gonna get that p-value, that probability, is I'm gonna find the area here, and I'm gonna find the area here, and we're gonna add them together, okay? We're gonna take those two areas, and just add them up, all right? Okay, so now let's come back to these problems here, see if we can't make some sense out of this, okay? And it says, for each claim, state the HL and the HA, and then determine whether the hypothesis test is a left tail, right tail, or two tail test, and then sketch a normal sampling distribution and shade the area for the p-value. Okay, so we've actually already done parts of these, of these problems before. So it says, uh, water faucet manufacturer announces that the mean flow rate is less than two and a half gallons a minute. Okay, so again, we're talking about means, and it is less than 2.5 gallons per minute, right? So this here, again, is my claim. And because it does not have an equal to part, this is going to be my HA. So then remember, my HO it's going to say that mu is bigger than 2.5, right? Now, so let's take a look. We're going to now figure out, is this a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? 
and it says sketch a normal distri a sampling distribution and the shade for the p-value. So the first thing I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to look for my HA. Since my HA is pointing to the left, I'm going to say this happens to be. Oh, come on, Ken. This happens to be a left tailed test, and my p-value is just going to be somewhere right about there. Okay, and that's all really I'm doing for this. I'm just so remember this piece right here we had already answered previously, all now we're doing is we're looking at the HA. The HA is gonna tell me whether it's left, right, or two-tailed, okay. uh, So look, let's take a look at number eight. And we'll go about it the same way that we did before. Okay, uh, number eight says, uh, cereal company advertises that the mean weight is more than 20 ounces. Okay, so mu is more than 20 ounces. Here is my claim again. Okay. And because that does not have an equal to, that's my HA. So then my HO, my HO will say that mu is smaller than or equal to 20 ounces, right? And again, I'm looking at my HA, so this here, looking at that, tells me this is going to be a right tail test. And I'm just going to come right here and say there's my p-value, right? And so then, like, number nine says, a university publicizes that the proportion of its students who graduate in four years is 82%. Okay, so my P here, here we go, my P my pen, is 0.82. This is my plane. And this also happens to be my null because it does have the equal to. So then my HA is going to say it is not equal to 0.82. And so just like we did before, we're trying to figure out if it's left tail, right tail, or two tail. We always look at the HA, and because it's not equal to, this is going to be a two-tailed test, right? And so my P, my areas, are going to look something like this, right? So, guys, I want to do something real quick like, let me see if I can pull this up. So, un momento por favor. Okay, so what I'm doing here is let me stop sharing that and I'm going to share one more thing with you guys here so you guys can see that I'm shooting it straight. Let's see, here we go. So what I'm doing here, y'all, I am pulling up my homework from 7.1, right? And so I'm just right here in the uh, 7.1 problems. This is, happens to be number 12, and it says, given HO uh, that the P is greater than or equal to 80, and HA P is less than or equal to, or less than 80%, determine whether the hypothesis test is a left tail, right tail, or two tail test. Okay, so remember what it is I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm looking always, y'all, at my HA, okay? So I want you to notice right here, look at the direction of my HA. What direction is that little arrow pointing to? Is it pointing to the left? Is it pointing to the right? Or is it a not equal to? Well, it's pointing to the left. So I'm going to say this is a left tail test. I'm going to go final check. Easy breezy cover girl, right? That's all that I'm really trying to do here. Okay. Look at the next one here. It goes in the same way. A researcher claims that 50% of the voters favor gun control. Determine the whether the hypothesis test is Left tail, right tail, or two tail? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do 
is uh, let's see. No. Yes, I am doing 7.1. Yes, ma'am. This is 7.1. So let me stop sharing this here. And I'm going to come back to my notes. Here we go. Okay. So, guys, what I'm going to do right here is put this one down, paste it. Here we go. Okay. So all I did is copy it and paste it so that I can... I can come back and, and figure out what I'm supposed to do here, all right? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm get my pen going. Uh, research claims that 50% of the voters favor gun control. So P is equal to 0.57%. This is the claim. These people uh, favor gun control, right? So what is the, so this is going to be my HO, right? So then my HA is going to be, well, it's not equal to 57%, right? So if it's not equal to, remember, and I'm always looking at my HA, then we're going to say this happens to be a two-tailed test, right? And so let me stop sharing this, come back one more time to my homework. And we said this was going to be a two-tailed test. So I'm going to click two-tail, go final check, and boom, we got it, right? So again, this is what I'm trying to look at in doing these types of problems here, okay? Um, so, you know, in doing these types of problems, guys, I really have to pay close attention to the way the question is worded. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to copy and paste this problem. Because I, one thing about this particular problem is the way it's worded, okay? So let me do this, stop sharing that, and come back to my notes. Here we go. And this is it. Okay, so let me paste this here. All right. And let me make sure that you guys, yes, you can see it. Okay. Oops. All right. So in looking at the problem here, guys, um, and it says a brewery claims that the mean amount of beer in their bottles is at least 12 ounces. Okay. So what I need to figure out is when I read that part, what is that? How, how would I write that? What is a, what does at least mean? Okay. So, First thing is, when I'm doing this problem, I get my pen. Here we go. Okay, we are talking about mean, so I'm going to say mu is at least 12 ounces. Does at least 12 mean 12 or more, or do you think it means 12 or less? Anybody got a, an answer they might want to put in the chat is, uh, so let me put it here, is, oops, is at least 12 12 or more or 12 or less. Okay, so think about it this way. So guys, if um, if I said I want to have, like my dad, my dad is one out of 11, right? So my dad comes from a big family, right? If I said I want to have at least 12 kids, what do you think that would mean? Do you think I want 12 kids or less, or do you think I want 12 kids or more? If I said I want to have at least 12 kids, what do you think? 12 or more, 12 or less? 12 or less? Less? So guys, at least 12 kids. Remember what that means. I want to have at least 12 kids, meaning the smallest number of children I want to have would actually be 12. So I really mean I want 12 kids or 13 kids or 14 kids or 15 kids or, you know, 37 kids, right? I don't want that many kids. But that's really what, what at least means. At least really means no smaller than that number. So 12 less, yeah, 
means yes yeah because think about it this way you're right it means it means that number or more uh at least 12 kids means i don't want any i don't want to have uh less than 12 kids i want to have 12 kids or 13 kids or 14 kids or, so 12 or less means uh oh, i'm sorry so at least 12 means actually 12 or more okay so I, I wanted to bring that up guys because uh, like for this particular problem, that's one of the things is making sure that we really understand the verbiage, the words that they're using, okay? So let me come back to my notes here. So we said at least 12 really means 12 or more. And here we go. So this is going to be greater than or equal to 12, right? This here happens to be my claim. And because this claim has the equal to part, this is going to be my HO. So then my HA is going to say, well, what's the opposite of saying more than or equal to? Well, the opposite would be less than 12, right? And anytime I'm doing these problems with figuring out, is it left tail, right tail, or two tail, I'm always going to look at my HA, and I'm going to look at the direction here. And I say, look, that arrow is pointing to the left. So I'm going to choose a left tail test, right? And if I stop sharing this here, y'all, and I come back to my um, to my, my homework problem, right? And we said this was a left tail test. So right here, y'all, I'm going to click on left tail, and I'm going to go final check. And we got it, right? Um, and so the same thing is kind of happening with each of these problems here, okay? So I want to kind of come back and I want to look at, let's say, because we just did, you know, we did three problems. And um, so I want to kind of look at some of these here and see if we can kind of answer some of these questions. Guys, my, my intention for us, and I'm glad there's so many of y'all here today, uh, is, look, we went over a little bit of 7.1. Let's do, let me, let me at least get you started on some of the problems. And then hopefully, you know, we're going to sign off in a few minutes because I'm going to do this with another one of my classes today uh, at 6. And then, um, but just because we're going to log off doesn't necessarily mean you need to log off, right? Get to the videos and stuff like that. And I think it'll, you know, kind of help you get started and, and stuff. And the guys, I'm going to send you guys a message tomorrow about uh, like the final exam and, you know, because we're kind of wrapping up the semester here, okay? So anyway, look at the problem here. It says, for the statement below, write the claim as a mathematical statement, state the null and alternative hypothesis, identify which represents the claim. Okay, so it says, a laptop manufacturer claims that the mean life, so mean, mean means I'm gonna use this little funny looking you, right? And they all have the funny looking you. And it says, it is less than nine hours. Okay, so this is not at least, this is strictly less than, right? So they're telling me that the mu is less than nine. So guys, if I look over here and I look at choice F, mu is less than nine, I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna go chickety check, perfect. Okay, now it says, which is the correct null and alternative hypothesis below? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is, let me see what that's gonna be. No, that's not what I wanna do, sorry. Okay, what I wanted to do was get this in here, and here we go. Okay. This one, come back over here. Okay. All right, so let's do this, and let's do this. Here we go. Okay, so I want to say you guys can see this now. Yes. All right, um, choose the correct null and alternative hypothesis below. So the first thing I'm gonna do, we wrote this part here, we said that mu was less than nine, this was our claim, right? And we would say, look, it, because this does not have an equal to, that's gonna be my HA. So then my HO is gonna say, what's the opposite of saying something is smaller than? saying something is bigger than or equal to, right? So now, if you notice, guys, I wrote out my HO and I wrote out my HA. 
The reason why I wanted to copy and paste it here was to show you that even though I'm going to do this on the computer, I still need to write down a couple of things, okay? Because when I write it down, it's going to help me answer this next question so much better. So what I want to do now is I'm going to look at what I wrote up here, and I'm going to see which is the one that matches up where the HO is bigger than or equal to 9 and the HA is smaller than 9. And that looks like choice F also, right? So if I were to come back over here, let's see, here we go. Choice F looks like that right there. So if I come back to my problem and I say, let's take a look, see here, and do this. And here we go. And I'm going to choose choice F and go chickety check. You got it. Okay. Now, which is the claim? So remember, we wrote that down, right? The alternate was the claim, right? And the alternate was saying that F was our claim, right? Because that's what we wrote originally. If you notice, we put it right here. And that's the alternate because it does not have the equal to parts. So we go check our answer. And we got it, right? And then, so I'm going to keep playing the same game, right? And I'm going to do this every single time, guys, right? Um, so let's do one more to make sure that we're doing okay. So let's take a look here. It says, for the statement below, write the claim as a mathematical statement, state the null and alternative hypothesis, and which represents the claim. So the standard deviation, so guys, remember, standard deviation uses this little funny looking O, is equal to, okay, it's telling me very specifically, it's equal to 301. So here we go. Chickeny check, perfect, okay. So now we're going to do the same thing we did before. So I'm going to do a little copy and paste again so that we can make sure that we're doing okay with this stuff. Okay, so let me copy this one here. Close that, close this. Stop sharing this one. Come back one more time. There we go. Okay. So now we got this part here. So we said the claim was sigma was equal to 301. This was our claim. And guys, because this has the equal to, this is going to be my alternate, my, I'm sorry, my null hypothesis, right? So then my alternate hypothesis is going to say sigma is not equal to 301, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through again which one has the equal and not equal to part, right? And it looks like, so guys, let me ask you a question. If you look at E, E has equal to and not equal to, and so does C. How would I know which one of those is the right one? Anybody know? Do you think it would be E or do you think it'd be C? Anybody want to throw a little answer in the chat box? Uh, e, oops, sorry. E. Or C. Okay, so Eric is saying C. Excellent. Perfect. And the reason why it's going to be C, y'all, is if you notice right here, HO is the one that's equal to. So HO is the one that's equal to. HA is the not equal to, and that's what we have right there. And over here, they have them switched around, right? So we definitely want to go with choice C. Perfect. Okay, so I'll tell you what. Let me stop sharing this. Let's come back one more time to our um, to our homework. So we can finish this problem off. Let's see. And we said it was going to be choice C, so we're going to go into this chickety check. Excellent thing. Okay, now which is the claim, right? So the claim was that sigma was equal to 301. So the null hypothesis, right, is equal to 301. So I'm going to say right here, choice B, the null hypothesis is the claim. And so I'm going to go check and check. And we got it. Okay. All right. So um, let me stop sharing this real quick, y'all. And let's see. So let me see. Let's go with this. I think you guys can see me. Okay. So 
as we went through, we did most of 7.1, right? I mean, we actually were doing all of the stuff there. So in terms of the notes, I'm not exactly, I'm just trying to see what was left in terms of the actual assignments. Um, and it didn't even look like the stuff that we still have in the notes was even in the assignment. So it was okay for us to stop right there. But did you guys feel okay with how we started off, like what we did today in terms of going over um, you know, the notes in 7.1 and then doing some of the problems and we able to kind of figure out how to do them. Is that, was that good? Yeah, good, 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 perfect. Okay, excellent. So guys, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop recording real quick.